track of <laughs> we're in uh, quarantine here. Um, I'm Caitlin Davis, as I'm sure you guys know, because you're on my Facebook page, but I'm joined by Jackie Hurtis with Interlink Mortgage. Um, and we are talking today about what you need to know when it comes to mortgages, the real estate industry, because um, as we all know, COVID has affected all of us. So we're just going to kind of jump in. And if you've got questions, please feel free to jot them down and I will ask as they come in. But, um, you know, Jackie, let's just kind of start at the top, like on your end of things, what are you seeing? Great question. Um, honestly, each day is completely different. We are definitely seeing guidelines tighten up as we get further into this. Unemployment rates are going up. So lenders are just becoming more conservative with their lending practices. So a lot of big companies have been increasing minimum credit scores. Interlink is, is still at 620 as of today, but it could literally change today or tomorrow. A lot of bigger companies have gone like 680 and government loans in general, just really tightening up. Um, interest rates as far as conventional rates go, amazing still. So it's still a really good time to purchase or refinance if you're looking to do so. Um, but yeah, just each day is completely different. And I <laughs> technical difficulties yep um so i had heard i know that we had actually talked like the other week um where initially it had been really good to refinance and then all of a sudden it was a, a no-go so where but you said we're back kind of oh, rates are amazing conventional rates are back to low low to mid threes right now okay. depending on what you want to do are you refinancing are you in a 30 year, 15 year? Are you doing right term refinance? Are you pulling money equity out, doing a cash out? All of that is gonna make a little difference to your interest rate, but they're amazing, relatively speaking. So if somebody's kind of sitting and they're, they're wanting to take advantage, does the mortgage process look any different for them right now? Cause you're saying things are tightening up. Is that just a matter of, of guidelines of getting them through the process? or is the process looking any different right now? For a purchase? Mm -hmm. Process is still the same, but it is going to become harder to get approved depending on where credit is at. So like I said, minimum credit scores, a lot of us were down at 580 just a couple weeks ago, and now a lot of people are at 680. So that's a huge chunk of people that no longer qualify. So it's getting um, with a lender who can get creative about how can we get credit scores up, and then debt to income ratio, I've seen some rules where like if you're below 700 credit score, your debt to income ratio can't go above like 43% now, depending on are you getting a seller credit or a lender credit. So once again, it's getting creative. Can we pay off a debt? Can we add a co-signer? So the process itself isn't changing necessarily, but the guidelines are tightening up. They're getting tougher. So if somebody went through the pre-approval process, say even a month ago, do they need to re-go through the process? You definitely want to reach out and talk to your lender to make sure that you're still okay. Okay. Um, and then I know, you know, things are getting kind of a wonky here. I know that we have dealt with um, just ensuring, because employment's a huge thing. And I know that a lot of people have gotten laid off. Um, but again, I guess it's just reaching back out, ensuring that you're still... Good to go. Yes, I would just be, be in direct communication with your loan officer. You and I have somebody right now who has an offer letter on the table for the summer. And when they sent me the offer letter, it was dated from February before any of this crazy COVID stuff happened. So my underwriter is like, this doesn't mean anything to me right now. Bring me a new offer letter. So I know that there's no change to her pay, that she's still starting on the same date. I have a girl under contract right now supposed to close next week. She's a hairdresser. And obviously none of them are working right now. So furlough, anyone who's furloughed right now, it's just case by case. Um, can you qualify if you are furloughed? Are they still paying you? You are still employed, but what's your compensation look like? So a lot of people have had to be re-evaluated at this new pay structure. And so if you qualify for this, the lesser pay that you're getting now, you're still good to go, but it's all case by case. And we were more lenient. Couple days prior to closing, we do what's called a verbal verification of employment to make sure that you're still working. A month ago, it was just a formality. No one really cared about it. But now it's like, oh, you were good last week, but now you're really unemployed and you no longer qualify for the house. What well, I mean, it's like like we said, it's a really weird time that we're going through. Um, I know that 
you know, a, a lot of people, cause there's all these headlines out there right now that are like no mortgage payment for like three months or no evictions or this or yep. that. Um, and so a lot of, you know, lenders are using forbearance, but I think sometimes when people read these headlines, they're thinking, well, that's kind of like free money. I don't have to end up paying that back. And that's not the case, right? Not at all. So for, that's the message that we want to get out. Forbearance is not forgiveness. You are going to end up paying that those six months of payments down the road. Um, first off, do not stop making your monthly mortgage payment until you've reached out, you've talked to your servicer and they've approved you for this forbearance program. And before you go through with it, you want to talk to your servicer. Your loan officer doesn't know what the terms are. You need to reach out to your servicer. So the person who you are making your monthly mortgage payment to, they're the ones who will tell you what those terms are. They're the ones who can improve it, not your loan officer. Um, but you want to know, you want to know that exactly what those terms entail, because I've heard different scenarios where, where okay, you don't have a payment for six months, but now all of those payments are due. The are following. Due yes. Yes. If somebody's mortgage payment was like, you know, two thousand a month, easy math. <laughs> like make it a thousand. <laughs> yeah, it's easier. But it's like you know, if they have to go six months not paying that two thousand a month, and then all of a sudden it's due, then you've got twelve thousand dollars. If I'm doing my math right, yeah, <laughs> you've got twelve thousand dollars due when that payment's due, and yep. it's not. $12,000, you just don't have to pay. You're going to have to pay it at some point. That's if you can continue to make the payment, I absolutely would. But if you are, if you've been laid off or you're having income issues, reach out to your servicer. But before you go through with it, just make sure that you know exactly what those terms are. What the terms are, that you will be able to make those payments when the, when the time comes. Um, because I, I mean, I know that in certain circumstances that, it you might not have to pay that lump sum they could potentially work out a way to spread that out but correct i've heard that that um one of the options is just maybe tacking on six months to the end of your term so if you were done at the end of 2020 now you're just going to be done at the middle of 2021. yeah so it's just a matter of like you said knowing your terms your conditions when you're doing this forbearance um but I, again, I know with all the headlines, it's really easy. And if people are not familiar with the process, it can seem like, oh, this is a great option for me. We'll just make right. sure that you know what you're getting into before you do it. Absolutely. So, you know, in terms of the mortgage world, and I mean, I know that everything's constantly changing. We're getting new information regarding COVID all the time. Um, but what what are you guys kind of thinking long term in terms of what what the industry is going to look like or, or what are even some predictions yeah so i did a quick video on this on monday the housing market prior to covid was extremely hot sales were at their highest level in 13 years you i'm sure we're experiencing this where your multiple offer situations people are losing out on the house of their dreams left and right to other offers we just had so much demand the supply could not keep up with it and we are expected to get back to that. Like this is a very isolated incident. It's a virus that is sh that shut down the economy. Like it's not like there was a problem with the housing market itself. Yes. Yeah, so we, we are expected to get back to that. We just don't know when it's going to happen. So in my video on Monday, I'm talking about this is a great opportunity if you're already in the market to purchase to get in at a really good price because there are going to people be people who have to sell because of this. Right. I mean, like you said, this is what we're dealing with is coming from an outside event. It's not um, like 2008 where it was like the it was the housing market. Yeah, <laughs> we're not like crumbling from within. And I mean, I know that you've seen this. I've seen this like we're I mean, real estate still considered an essential service. So we are still moving forward with, um, you know, everything. And of course, it's, you know, we're just having to lean much more in a digital manner in terms of getting our, our jobs done. But um, like you said, from everything that I've, I've, I've listened to, researched, read, it's very similar to what you're saying is that, yes, we're taking a hit, but it should bounce back. It should bounce back. I mean, I've even seen things saying like, we'll start to recover third quarter and then really recover fourth quarter and first quarter of next year. But, um, you know, like you said, it's just kind of. 
I mean, I wish we had a timeline, right? Me too. Uh, you and I were talking about this. I wish we knew when we were out of quarantine, but we don't know. I know. We're both <laughs> doing this from quarantine. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But now, is there anything else, you know, that you want to speak to in terms of just what's just, going on? It's, I still think that there, it, there is opportunity there for people. Like I said, price point, you could get in at a really good price because people are going to be forced to sell. And then interest rates, conventional rates are extremely low. Even government government rates are historically low. So this is still a great time to get in if you were already if you were thinking about purchasing. So kind of take away for people, like you said, great time to get in, especially if you're thinking of purchasing. Um, I know on my end of things, if people are looking to purchase, we are doing virtual tours. I am doing FaceTime. Um, I've got a whole bunch of safety protocols in place if people <laughs> are interested in still purchasing at the time. So one, it's still a good time to buy. Um, rates are still low. Extremely. Yep. And then, you know, of course, everyone's situation is different right now, just in terms of where they are job wise. Um, but, you know, if they're still interested in purchasing, still reach out to you um, or to, to, you know, a lender of their choice and um, figure out if they still meet the stricter guidelines that have been. Put. Yes. Yeah. Um, like you said, um, Interlink is still around a 620. Yep, our minimum on government is 620 right now. Okay. Um, and when you say government, just FHA, uh, VA, USDA. Yep. We can still do we can still do THDA, which is a first first time homebuyer bond program in Tennessee that a lot of lenders are going away from. There's the housing fund, which is a down payment assistance program that we can still do. Like there are still great opportunities for first time homebuyers as well. Awesome. Um, yeah, so, I mean, just, you know, guidelines may be stricter right now, but I mean, like you said, interest rates are great. If people want to refinance, we've kind of come on the other side of that, like temporary hump. <laughs> yes. We saw like a, a week or two ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're still moving forward, right? <laughs> yes. Well, and I think that all of the, um, a bunch of agents released March information in the last week or two and sales in middle tennessee were still very i think they were up so they were. were really strong mm -hmm. i mean obviously that's kind of stuff that was in the works prior to covid but as you and i were talking about before we got on here we're both busy yeah we really haven't seen a slowdown i mean we're we're very thankful just within um you know i know that that's not the case for a lot of people and we're very very thankful um for that, but yeah, things are still moving forward. So I think it's just a matter of if you're still interested in in getting in or making moves, then um, just to to reach out. Yeah, and which questions to answer. Navigate people through the process. Yeah, I mean, we're sitting at home. We have time to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> we do. It may be virtual, but we can do. <laughs> awesome, Jackie. Well, thank you so very much for jumping on with me today, yeah. and talking through this. I know that there's so much information out there and, and, you know, I think it can, you know, people can kind of get lost in just being bombarded with messages. So just being able to get out there and let them know at least what's happening still within the real estate world and the mortgage world is going to be super helpful. So thank you. Thank you. And stay safe. Stay safe. Thank you, girlie. I will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.